Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and imagine this, if we open up your mind and we look inside and we describe processes, the mental processes inside, what you might notice is you have two different ones. One seeks to understand problems abstractly, one likes to envision, speculate, predict what will happen next, when will it happen, at what time, how will it look like, how could it be done, what could happen next. Another one likes to do it, just do it. You know, one uh, part of you just wants to get right in it. What is happening? How is it happening? What can we do? How do we deal with it? What do we say right now in this moment? What do we do to deal with the problem at hand? So we all have these processes inside us, but two different personality types have two different responses or experiences of these processes. The visionary enjoys and gets energy from conjuring up a future or devising abstract rules or principles using intuitive and judging principles to formulate plans and plots and schemes for how to do things. The other type, the sensing and perceiving type, likes to sense and perceive and see what's happening. How is it happening? What are people doing? How are they doing it? How does it look? How does it smell? And what can I say and what can I do about it? And that's the agent archetype. So today let's talk about the agent and the visionary types. How do we tell them apart? How do they look like? How do they work? The thing is, the sensing and perceiving type likes to build itself from action and events. They are the ones that sniff up, up what's happening. What is going on? What is actually happening? What you see is the agent knows where things are going on and what people are doing and what's events what events are happening as they are and they are able to be in the heat of the battle in the heat of the moment they're attentive and active and engaging if you look at the eyes of the visionary you notice the visionary has a disengaged and drained look they don't look engaged or interested in their environment or what's happening around them they sit in the back of the classroom they look out over everyone or they look somewhere else outside the window or down at the Board and then they're working on something, writing on something. What are they writing on? It has nothing to do with the subject that's being studied in the classroom. They're not interested in, they're not engaging in the conversations that are happening around them. They are this own manner of focus, this own interest that they are working on independently. They have their own methods, their own strategies to solving problems. They're independent where the agent is engaged. So what you see is the agent is the person that stirs up and keeps things active and makes sure things are happening and makes sure things are getting done. What you see is they're talking, what's going to be happen? When are you going to do it? Are you going to do it now? Are you going to take care of this? The agent is the person that keeps their environment alive and active, keeps things happening. So what you see is they are usually focused on the quick and easy solution. Their natural interest is in the quick and easy solution. What is the simplest way to solve this problem? How do we get this done? How do we get this out of the way? So what you see is there is less inventiveness associated with this process. It's not about creating this own unique method. It's more about working and solving the problem in the fastest and most direct method possible. So what you see is the sensing and perceiving type comes out of the problem, right? immediately directly hands-on where the intuitive judging type the visionary type comes at things uniquely independently in their own way often in a unusual way and they're often unfit for dealing with problems that are happening in the here and now personality types they're not static, they're not boxes, they're not stereotypes. It's not that the visionary cannot deal with problems that are happening in the here and moment now. It's not that the agent cannot plan for the future or cannot work independently with something, but it's that they don't want to, they don't like it, it's taxing, it's stressful. Why would I do it that way? Ask the agent to try and come up with their own method to solve a problem. And they will just go, but I already know a method that works. I saw you do it late yesterday. Why don't I just do that method? Or this seems like a really fast and easy method. Why do I, would I come up with a new one? So what you see is uh, the visionary goes, why should I just do what everyone else does? I just want to do this my own way. I just want to try out another method. Maybe there's another way to do it. And what you see is often the intuitive judging type can think for a very long time about something. They can put in a lot of energy and a lot of interest and a lot of uh, 
control into devising a solution or a method for something. And that's why I call them visionaries. They come up with unique tools, methods, mechanisms, strategies for solving with the problems that we all face in the here and now and in the future that we will face in the future. So what you see is uh, two different personality types with two different interests. How do you tell them apart? How do you know the differences between the two? First, you look at, for example, their gaze. How do they react when there are things happening in their environment? What you notice is that first, the visionary seems bothered and distracted by it. Something new happens and the visionary goes, okay, I'll do it. I'll get it out of the way because I know I have to, even though it's stressful and even though it's taxing. The agent goes, oh, something is happening. Let's do it. Let's see what it is. What is it? What's happening? They're interested. They get energy from it. They get control from it. They like to be on top of things. They like to be the first person to answer, to respond, to deal with something. So what, so what you also notice is the intuitive judging type famously lags behind everyone else. They answer later. They react later. Their react and response time is way off. The interest is in what's going to happen in the future so often what they are reacting to has not even happened yet when they bring it up people will go but that's later that's not now yeah that's possible but that sounds very far-fetched what you notice is their projects are and their principles seem way difficult to describe how do you describe intuitive judging well you can't you cannot explain it it's very hard to explain and that's why a lot of them tend to say oh i'm so misunderstood nobody gets how my process work nobody understands my mind the principles the intuitive judging types work with are cannot be practically defined can rarely be practically defined because they're abstract in their nature it's i want balance and i want peace of mind and i want control and i want energy and i want this and that but it's not something you can sum up or explain very easily as a decision or as a strategy. What are we actually going to do? Yeah, let's do something that will create balance. Okay, so what is that? Often the intuitive judging type cannot define their ideas practically. They have some clues about what to do and they usually know what they're doing and they can be quite smart and come up with solutions. But it's hard to explain it and that's why they can be dismissed for it. So often what tends to happen is they tend to work at things quite independently and they tend to develop lone wolf syndrome. They tend to be the people that go at things alone. And yeah, this is true for ENFJs and ENTJs as well. What you notice is they love to be around people, but they tend to be quite independent and they tend to do things their own way. So they also tend to alienate the group and everyone around them. And they tend to raise a lot of suspicion. What you see is what I always keep getting is uh, they're plotting something, they're up to something strange, what are they doing? You hear whispers around them, you hear people that are being paranoid by their ideas and their methods because they do things differently. Other people assume they're doing things wrong or incorrectly. A lot of the time people assume different is wrong or incorrect and that's something intuitives are going to have to bear. Different, wrong. Different, wrong, that's the association that a lot of people make. But different can also be right, can be more right than what it used to be. Of course, it can also be wrong, so be aware of that. A lot of the time, it can be clumsy. What you see is the agent is able to deal with and stay on top of what's happening around them. They're able to deal with and take care of things. But what you also notice is the visionary tends to lag behind. And it's often that you have to keep on reminding them, have you done it yet? Have you been there yet? Have you tried it yet? And they always say later, maybe, yeah soon and then the question is when is soon when is now how soon is now so um you have to chase them you have to keep them active you have to keep them engaged but maybe ideally you don't want to because every time you do you also tax them of their resources every time you ask them what about now you also keep them from planning for the future and that means when the future happens and the future will happen and it might suck for example in regards to climate change and if people who care about the future would actually deal with the future and come up with solutions for it, perhaps the world would be a lot better and we would not have to deal with all that shit that we have left to deal with that's still in the future, that still hasn't happened yet.
You also want to work with a degree of respect towards the sensing mind. The sensing mind is intelligent, it's very smart, it's very got very strong instincts. Often intuitive judging types, they have terrible instincts. Their response in the heat of the moment in panic is terrible. But the sensing and perceiving types response is great, it's awesome, it's fantastic. That's something you should seek to mimic. Something bad happens, they're able to deal with it with a sense of joy and energy, and they're good at it. They're ideal firefighters, they're ideal for taking care of a problem, of solving us, saving us from an accident, uh, jumping to an explosion, you know, like with James Bond music you know, blasting around them, you know. They're able to get things done. They have this tennis ball mentality. Every ball that's coming up, they got it. And it's just true for the ISFPs and ISTPs as well. What you notice at work is... They're usually on top of things. You don't have to remind them. You don't have to keep telling them to do it. They've done it or they've gotten it and it's, they've gotten through it. So that's a relief and that's something to be very happy with. So what I want to do is now is ask you one final question. Are you an intuitive judging type or are you a sensing perceiving type? How do you tell the difference between the two types? Have you developed any specific tips or strategies that I don't know of? Let me know in the comments down below. Let everyone know in the comments down below. How do you tell the difference between an agent and a visionary? If you like this video, leave a like, share and subscribe. And thanks everyone for watching.